Tuning of late model Dodge vehicles such as this 2020 Challenger RT provides a bit of a challenge for the tuners and that is due to what's referred to as an artificial neural network. Now that is a mouthful but essentially it's how the Dodge engine control module calculates the airflow into the engine. And this has up until now been very very difficult for tuners to access, modify and correctly optimise. Fortunately, HP tuners have come to the party recently with their neural network trainer, which makes this relatively straightforward. So let's start by talking about what this neural network is and why Dodge are using it. Well, for a start, let's jump into our HP tuner software and we are on our Airflow neural network tab, as we can see here. And we don't have a VE table, a volumetric efficiency table that we can conventionally see in tune. Instead, we've got these weights and biases which we can see here for first layer, second layer and output layer and this means nothing to me. If we open one of these up, let's see what we've got. Basically a bunch of numbers that really have no relevance to me as a tuner. So what happens with the Dodge engine control module is it uses these uh, neural network values that we've just looked at here to essentially calculate the volumetric efficiency of the engine and give us a, a, a virtual volumetric efficiency number and essentially then the engine control module can calculate the airflow into the engine and decide how much fuel to deliver and what ignition timing to deliver. Now. Why isn't it just using a conventional volumetric efficiency table? Well, the trick is that it does have these. And if we come over to our speed density tab here, we will actually find a range of volumetric efficiency tables, which we can see right here. Problem is, this doesn't work very well when we've got an engine that uses the likes of variable cam control because the volumetric efficiency of the engine is going to vary with the cam timing. So what this means is we can't tune the engine off a single volumetric efficiency table because if the cam timing changes from what it was when the VE table was set up and optimised, then our volumetric efficiency is going to be inaccurate and this means our fueling and our ignition timing aren't going to be correct. And in this instance, if we close this down and come back to our neural network, Network, we can see that the neural network is enabled which means it will actually bypass those tables or the table that we just looked at. Up until now tuners have essentially been fudging the numbers and kind of cheating I suppose is a good way of putting it by disabling the neural network and instead relying on those VE tables that we just looked at and that creates all of the problems that I just mentioned relative to our cam timing. The other option that's being used is to fudge another table or set of tables which relates to the amount of fuel that's going to be delivered for a given pulse width and we jump again to the software we can see one of those tables here which is our injector pulse width versus fuel mass. So essentially we're cheating by telling the ECU that a different amount of fuel is going to be delivered for a given pulse width than what really is. Now it's possibly going to get the job done but it's kind of a, a bit of a band-aid solution to the actual core problem and in my opinion when we're doing this we really want to do it right because cheating a table like this can bring in unintended consequences. Now that we know the problem and kind of how Dodge are dealing with this let's have a look at our scanner and see what we've got here. Now this is a 100% stock vehicle at the moment and really there's a lot of data here we're just sitting at idle and what I want to show you which is quite scary really is this set of graphs down the bottom which is our combined long term and short term fuel trims. So we've got these separated bank to bank. At the moment I've just set, reset the adapter so we don't have any long term trims in at the moment but we can see our short term fuel trims for both banks are sitting very negative at sort of 10 to 15%. Now those are moving around but this is pretty scary. Generally for a properly tuned engine I'd like to see these at no more than plus or minus 5% and ideally probably more like plus or minus 2 to 3%. So how can we correct this? Well let's jump back into our editor and this is where the neural network trainer comes in. If we come up to our edit tab up here what we'll find is that for vehicles that have neural network training available we will see we've got this VE neural network trainer option. Let's click on that and at the moment we've got absolutely nothing. We're going to click on the create new file icon and it'll ask if we would like to create a, a file for the VE neural network. We're going to click yes and we're going to give this a name. We'll call it test ANN for the moment and then it's going to ask us if we'd like to go to Tuner Tools which is a website that HP Tuners offer that provides training for the neural network. Let's head over there now and see how it works.
We're now on the tunertools.hptuners.com website and we can see that we are currently looking at the neural network trainer. And what we want to do is upload the file that we just created. So let's go and find that file now. We'll select that file and click upload. And what will happen is that very quickly the neural network trainer will give us a new file to download. Once that's there, we can download that file and we can head back across to the VCM editor software and just simply open that file up. Now what we can see is we've got a volumetric efficiency table that kind of should make sense to us. We can uh, view this graphically as well and yes that does look like a VE table, the numbers all make sense. What we can also see here is that we've got drop down menus here for our exhaust cam and our intake cam position. If we look at all of these we can see we've got five tables for each cam position or each cam I should say. Now this is pretty daunting, now we've got 5 times 5 so 25 different VE tables that we need to tune. And this is again because of what I said, when the cam timing changes so does the airflow into the engine or in other words the volumetric efficiency. So that's why we have these 25 tables. The good news for us here is that the 5.7 litre Hemi V8 uses a single cam and while yes it is variable what this means is that the relative positions of the intake and the exhaust cam lobes have to remain the same. What this means is that when we advance or retard the cam we're advancing and retarding both the intake and the exhaust valve opening positions simultaneously. So what this means is it actually cuts down our work dramatically, we've actually only got five tables that we need to adjust because, for example, if we open our exhaust cam position here, at an exhaust cam position of 128 degrees, the intake cam position will be, on the table we've just got highlighted here, 100.5. Essentially with the stock cam we always have a 228.5 degree difference between the intake center line and the exhaust center line. So that cuts down our work. Anyway, let's head back to our scanner so we can get a sense of where we are currently operating. At the moment we are logging both our intake and our exhaust cam position. We can see our exhaust cam is sitting at 125 degrees. We'll just worry about that for the moment. So let's head back to our editor and 128 is pretty close to 125, if we open this drop down menu, the ECU will end up interpolating between these. So you do need to be a little bit careful about how close you are to the centre of each of these tables, but in our case we're pretty close. So we want to choose 128 and of course as we already mentioned 100.5 degrees. Let's head back to our scanner again so that we know where we're going to be making our changes. And you can see here that we are currently idling at 700 RPM. What we also need to know because the load axis for the VE table is pressure ratio and we have that logged right here 0.27. So now we know essentially where the engine control module is accessing. So if we look here uh, we're somewhere in the region of about this, this part here. Let's just make a quick across the board change so we can see a sense of how this works. So this isn't really an elegant way of tuning, I'm just demonstrating the process here. So what I'll do is I'll just make sure that I highlight an area that covers where we're idling and a little bit more. So what we're going to do is take some fuel out of here and in order to do this we need to reduce the volumetric efficiency which will tell the control module that we've got less air going into the engine and hence we need to inject less fuel to meet our air fuel ratio target. So what are we going to do here? Well, we know that we were between about 10 and 15% too rich because our short term trims were pulling fuel out. So we need to reduce the airflow or volumetric efficiency numbers by uh, the same amount. So what I'm going to do here is just split the difference. Let's go with multiplying by 0 0.88 and that's going to have the effect of removing 12% VE. I'll use our little multiply symbol here and that will do exactly what we asked. Now of course again this is going to create a, a step in our VE table which we can visualise, it's down in this area here but again I'm only demonstrating the idle area of course we're going to go through and thoroughly uh, recalibrate our VE tables. Now that we've made our changes to our VE table we want to use the little button down here that says export for training, we'll click on that and we'll save this file and we'll just call this test ANN1 We'll save that file and then again we're going to go to Tuna Tools and upload that file. So let's go over and do that. Now we want to select the file that we just created which is in our downloads folder and we'll select test ANN1. Now this process takes a little bit longer, essentially the Tuna Tools website is going to create a new set of parameters for our artificial neural network. So we'll jump ahead once it's done its work. 
We've now got our file complete, ready to download. So we'll download that file, head back to our editor, and now we're simply going to open the file uh, that we've just uh, created. And we can see that that's called test ANN1, and then result will open that up. And it'll prompt us that uh, this file contains uh, trained calibration values, and we'd like to update these now. Of course, yes, we would. So I'm going to click yes, and we'll click OK. Now we can see that uh, the weights and biases have actually changed. So what we want to do now is we'll save this file, and then we can flash it into the ECU. So let's jump ahead, and we'll get back with our engine running and see our results in the scanner. We've got our engine back up and running and straight away we can see that our short term and long term fuel trims are much much closer to zero. We've still got a bit of bank to bank variation and generally the process that I've just shown you is iterative. So generally you're going to probably need two or three attempts to really dial everything in but for one attempt, one iteration of our changes has made a massive change. Remember we were idling with negative trims between 10 and 15% and now we're sort of splitting between bank to bank uh, sitting around that zero which is where we want to be. Remembering I said plus or minus 5% is sort of the, the range that I'd accept and generally I'd be trying to aim for plus or minus 2 to 3%. So uh, we're there or thereabouts. Now of course we've only looked at optimising the idle area but the process for doing our part throttle and our wide open throttle tuning is really essentially the same. Uh, to do this though what we're going to do is make use of HP Tuner's graphs and we'll just slide those in so we can see how these work. We've got two sets of these, the ones that I'm just going going to highlight now these cover our closed loop area of operation and in order to do this what we're looking at is the short term and long term fuel trims and we're logging those into this graph so we're sitting at 128 degree exhaust cam position at the moment and we can see while well, we're sitting at idle here really we're sitting around about a positive 3%, so we're adding 3% fuel. So again, pretty good considering where we were. Unfortunately, this vehicle is not equipped with wideband air fuel ratio sensors though. They're only narrow band, so this is only any good for us when we're running in closed loop mode and targeting 14.7 to 1 or Lambda 1. When we go into wide open throttle or power enrichment, we're generally then targeting richer mixtures. And in order to help with this, we've got another set of tables here, which I've listed as PE for power enrichment. And these essentially do exactly the same thing, but this time they use our wideband air fuel ratio meter that we've fitted to the vehicle, brings that data into the scanner, and then we're using a math channel called equivalence ratio error or air fuel ratio error, which is just exactly what it says. The difference between the air fuel ratio that the engine engine control module is asking for and what we're actually getting. So this will log all of those errors under wide open throttle into our power enrichment tables. They are separated based on our cam angle and then we can actually copy and paste those errors using the paste special function directly into the VE tables and really speed up our corrections. If you'd like to learn more about Dodge tuning and tuning in general, click the link. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.